Hey, everybody. Welcome to Virtual Trek Con with Sirach Lofton, of course. Hello, hello. And Melissa Longo, of course. Hello. <laughs> We've got the Delta Flyers here. Which ones? All of them. We've got <laughs> Robbie. we got Rebecca, Megan, uh, Garrett. Garrett's wearing an awesome Delta Flyer shirt. If you're just listening in, you are missing out. You should check this uh, sweater <laughs> out. Uh, how's everybody doing today? And Megan. Good. good. Great. Doing good. Didn't I say Megan? Yeah. Oh, yeah. you yeah. did? I felt so terrible. Oh, yeah, I'm did. sorry. <laughs> uh, and my name's Ryan T. Husk, by thing. the way. I forgot Megan. Is that what you just said? Megan. All right. Thank you, though, for looking out for me. But... It's very kind of you. So first things first, everybody, you know Robbie and Garrett as uh, Tom Paris and Harry Kim. Uh, also, the four of them work on the Delta Flyers. They are going warp speed through all of Voyager. They're currently on season seven. I don't know what you want to tell us that you may have not already said on your show. But first of all, first things first, actually, I'd like to know from Rebecca and Megan, if possible, because I know we we know your answers, uh, Robbie and Garrett. Rebecca and Megan, have you had you seen all of Voyager before you took this trip with the Delta Flyers? All of it, no. Some hmm. of it, yes, correct. Some of it, yes. Yeah, I, I think I've, I think I've seen all of it. Like I'd watch it with my brother, and when you get to like episodes that I haven't seen in a long time, I'm slowly remembering. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember watching that one, thinking I've never seen it, but I've probably missed some. I don't know. Can I say this? No. <laughs> that, that's a sign of people that have been he together for a while she knows where he's going one point what's that she dressed as seven of nine for halloween and when she was young yeah oh, oh that's when cute when I was growing up, so. yeah when she was growing yeah. up so seven of nine yeah. and she dressed like seven of nine when she how old were you do you remember middle school seven middle or nine school. So. of course <laughs> like <laughs> There's, you know, who would she dress as? Chakotay? Like, it's kind of... <laughs> <laughs> hmm. uh, you, could gender, you could flip gender on that. That'd be really <laughs> cool. Your next one, she flips cute. Chakotay. Thank you, Robbie. You said that's a great one. Here you go. You but put the uh, tattoo. Tom Paris for the crew. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. The oh. Tom Paris face. Oh, where do I... We'll figure Wait, that out later. Okay, we'll figure that out later. We already <laughs> didn't you? There is a, there is, there's a, so one time uh, there was a director on a show I was working on and, and I came down to set and she had ordered somewhere online, like a mask with an elastic band that was like a photo of Tom Paris, but it was really <laughs> big. It was like super size mask. That big. It was like the size of your head. I thought it was bigger. Mm -hmm. No. But it had elastic band, and so everybody was passing it around. So we, since I can't go on the cruise this year because of work, I said we should order one of those masks, and Megan or Garrett could wear it, and you know, the fans, <laughs> yeah, cosplaying Robbie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna come out on the stage for my stand up wearing that oh mask. God. That's what I should do. Oh. Oh, that's what you should do. Yeah. Are you doing stand up again this year, uh, Garrett? Yes, yes, nice. Yes. Yeah, love it. <laughs> oh boy, had you guys oh. ever watched it before? Uh, had you guys watched it start to finish? The whole no, definitely not me. Robbie actually doesn't really remember working on the show. I that's not that, you know, exaggerated, but there's a lot of stuff I don't remember. I just don't like entire episodes. In fact, we reviewed one recently and Garrett was, was like, Oh, you're gonna Was it Drive? I think it was Drive, the episode Drive. Yeah. With, I didn't remember anything about it. You, and then when we you remember we, the uniforms, that's I it. I remember the costume because it was a cool <laughs> racing outfit or something. Yeah, and I've seen photos of that. But when you know Garrett's like, you can't remember this. I was like, no, I don't remember anything about it. And it was mostly Garrett and me and Roxanne. It was really, and one guest star. It was a huge episode for my character and Garrett's character. But I didn't remember any of it. Not a thing. These look amazing. No, now everybody guys, remembers these. Oh, that's really so are. cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. They are. Now, yeah. Were you guys getting uh, revisions like day of? Um, um, you know, for, yeah, I think we usually got them 
the night before or you know it would be close to filming but i don't think we got them day of very often that was rare but it did happen i do remember it happened a yeah. few times yeah how about you guys on, on deep space yeah um we would get sometimes day of yeah where whole scenes yeah. are like just changed around which which i was trying to equate like deleting all that stuff in your head to not remembering <laughs> Uh, filming stuff because you're so you can sometimes you get into the mode of like forget everything you just yeah. learned about that scene and now it's a whole nother scene and yeah. you have to change the whole tone and everything and so sometimes you have to just delete stuff from your head yeah and i wonder i wonder if you know as we go through stuff because we have so much to do coming up next coming up next coming up next you just like push it out of your push the last episode out of your mind type thing yeah that, so, that makes a lot of sense because yeah. i was never a good memorizer like memorizing lines for me was hard i had to drill it and drill it and drill it so i had to you're right i think i had to just be able to dump it and like clean the slate and move on so maybe that's yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah because yeah. so, i remember well, watching oh, stuff sorry. and not oh sorry yeah i remember no, seeing ahead. stuff too like the same as you guys where I'd look at him like I don't remember that scene. I don't remember where he threw that milkshake on my on, on me. You know, like I don't right. remember that. But uh, I, partly of it, of it is too because I was super young. But I also think it's that you have to delete stuff. But what were you yeah. saying, Melissa? No, I was going to ask. So um, being that you don't didn't remember some stuff or. Um, what was the most surprising things about through your that you found through your rewatch? Um, what well, were you I was just going to say, Robbie and I both discovered that the character of Kess, played by Jennifer Lean, was a very mm -hmm. integral integral character to the mm -hmm. you know the entire show. Really huge, that much bigger. Not, you know, I mean, real. I think Robbie and I both thought of that character before the rewatch as almost like an afterthought character. Like it, it was, you know, just an extra appendage you didn't need, you know, but in re in the rewatch, we realized, man, she's really such an important character. And it's kind of, it kind of sucks that, that, you know, she had to go, to be honest. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and I think the, the reason she was so important is because she was critical in other characters' growth as well. It wasn't just yeah. like her stories were cool. It was like, oh my God, I forgot that the doctor would not have taken that turn if Kess wasn't there or, you know, whatever. So many characters, Tom Paris too, all of us. Like. Yeah. And it's so crazy because she was the youngest of all the characters, not only the actress, she was the youngest actor, but the yeah, character. She was like something. one or something, right? <laughs> yeah, she <powered. laughs> But yet she was the Yoda of the show. Yeah. She was the wise oh. seer. She would give people yeah. counsel. She would help people understand what their path was. It was just crazy. And we didn't realize yeah. that. Show, so. um, I wonder if and, was was Kes, I think Kess was one or maybe two. I don't really remember. And I remember Ocampa's I think she was two. Ocampa's, yeah. Yeah, they lived to be like nine or something. I if I remember I correctly, I, something. I thought it was like six. Or, or and I wonder if they didn't create that type of character, just assuming that we would see basically her entire life through, you know, Ooh. the course of the entire series, and then at the end she she dies or something happens you know she mm -hmm. ends her life and so i always just kind of assumed that they created that character to basically you know bookend her her entire life bookends uh the series and it's kind of a tragedy that we didn't get to see that because you know they had some great mm -hmm. plans for her yeah yeah that yeah i sense. think you're i think you're right i think they did create that character thinking it would span the seven-year run of the series mm -hmm. and then when they when they wrote that character out to bring seven of nine in i think one thing i forgot is in season six she came back i didn't remember that mm -hmm. Cass came back yeah. Yeah, yeah Cass came back as a character in an episode that i f had forgotten about and when we rewatched it we for we both forgot actually. we both forgot yeah and it was an episode where i was like why did they do that to her character because it was really uh, in my opinion, uh, uh, it damaged the character, the integrity of that character, and so much of what they did the first three years. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. So oh, I've been curious about this. I just wanted to hear more about uh, the Delta Flyers. Anybody that's watching this that has not seen the Delta Flyers, check them out. The Delta Flyers 
dot org. Very important. Remember O R G the Delta Flyers dot org. Check them out. There's still plenty of time and still plenty of goodies to enjoy with them. But can you take us through a typical week in the world of the Delta Flyers? Like who does what? You know, on Monday, Tuesday, by Wednesday, you got to have this or we're in trouble. And and Megan's always like, oh, boy, John Smith posting in our group again here. What do we do? You know, what's <laughs> what's just like a typical week look like in your world? You've heard about John Smith. Huh? Who hasn't? <laughs> this He's guy's a, a menace. You should keep your mouth shut more. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we had, like, the way you laid it out sounds wonderful. Like, oh, every, <laughs> every Monday this, and every Wednesday. We, I wish it were that organized. I think between Garrett's schedule with a lot of conventions and travel and other things, we have to uh, schedule based on, like, I, I direct or produce, so mm -hmm. there's that schedule. So often we try to um, get ahead in terms of our recording because we know there's going to be these big holes where garrett's out of the country and i'm on set and we may not record for a two three four weeks sometimes so we bank yeah. a lot of episodes so mm -hmm. whenever garrett and i have an overlap where we both have some time which is usually weekends these days we'll try to bang out you know get in there and do some interviews we, we do a lot of guest interviews from crew members and cast we do yeah. a lot of bonus content plus we do the recaps so we our weekends are often filled with that kind of stuff mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i mean when robbie um was not in vancouver that was ideal because he had monday yeah. through uh, the entire week was basically open so we could do a lot of banking but now that he's in vancouver producing um that's tough because he only has saturday and sunday and then I typically travel or go to some type of event or whatever on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, so that makes it difficult to schedule. So that's, that's yeah. probably the toughest thing that we have to deal with is scheduling more than anything else. Yeah. So we no have a typical good... weeks, basically. <laughs> They're yeah, all no, different. <laughs> no, no, that's not true. I mean, I think Megan and I have pretty typical weeks when we're editing and stuff because we have to have the podcast done by a certain date. Um, but in terms of the day to day, like there's nothing specific. Yeah. Um, but we just like we have to get the episodes edited and done by usually we try Friday. Usually. Yeah. Uh Rebecca and Megan, what do you do besides editing on on the team? We wrangle these guys. Yeah. <laughs> they wrangle us and handle the scheduling, sounds like they do yeah, customer so service. Like customer service merch yeah. is Rebecca yeah. right now. Yeah. So you know. Or try to organize the schedule. Like her and I communicate a lot with each other, saying like, "Is so and so available? Like, is Garrett available for this or that?" And then we have production calls with um, some of our tiers, and so scheduling that in advance, making sure that those dates work. So there's a lot of stuff. Like we'll micromanage each other, but at the same time, we can all work independently for the most part too. Megan mm -hmm. and Rebecca have their own Zoom call. Just those yeah. two with the highest highest tier. Is it all? Is it admirals and captains, or just admirals? What is it? Just admirals. Admirals, just yeah. The highest tier uh, uh, Patreon supporters. Uh, they have a separate Zoom call with just Megan and Rebecca. So that's another plus for them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. When you guys are doing um, the rewatches, what what's the uh, the mindset when you're watching it like going into mm -hmm. it is it does you feel like it's are you anticipating it are you excited about it? are you does it feel like work it, like, it's does, a little stressful for me because i have to make notes as i go and so mm -hmm. like when i rewatch an episode i would say averages like three hours or more that i sit down and like even though the episode's only 45 minutes or whatever the running time is I'm starting, stopping, going back, looking at different moments, trying to make notes of like, oh, I think I remember something about that. Or I don't know. You know, it takes a while. It's a little stressful for me because I got a remote in one hand and my phone in the other for notes. <laughs> Life is rough, man. I mean, it's just rough. sometimes you have to hold a, you need a third hand for a beer. I mean, yeah. life is a third not, hand for a beer. Exactly. It's, 
<laughs> but Robbie, are you looking at it from a director's standpoint when you're watching it? Are you looking at it from an actor's point standpoint? Both. Sometimes both, I would say. Like I definitely am more aware of the technical side now than I was back then. Just of like how why the director shot it that way or why they put the camera where they put it or why they blocked the actors. We've noticed a lot on the show blocking the actors in a way that like they're standing really too close to each other. Yeah, yeah. Forced the shot, and I was like, I was "Like, I don't remember it being so forced, but it sometimes <laughs> looks really forced." Yeah, you stand over his shoulder, and you stand yeah. over his shoulder. The three of you all. <laughs> Are we seeing a dog? Right? Speaking of blocking, yeah. is there a dog trying to uh, block is the that, frame? Yeah. Is that Walter? <laughs> Walter. I've got to see this guy. big guy. I know yeah. he's a big boy. He's so cute. Come up, say hi. Come up. There he is. Oh, my oh, yeah. gosh. <laughs> What's that over there? Look over oh, there. No, oh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> this dog can fit in the oh, left goodness. paw of that dog, probably. This <laughs> Aww. So cute. What's that dog's name? The little guy? Nala. Nala, it's a girl. Nala. Half Nala. Chihuahua, half Yorkie. That's one. From uh, the Lion King, Seven named pounds. after the Lion King. Yes, because she looked like Nala from Lion King exactly Dude. when she was a puppy. But nice. Seven Part pounds. Of, one of our uh, one of our podcast listeners actually did some art of our dog, some beautiful <laughs> art. Like I love how fans will sometimes like you know um, hook on to some you know part of our lives, a character or our dog or whatever, and and create such amazing great gifts for us so we've got we've got it back at home this little this like drawing you know pencil drawing it's beautiful of walter speaking of pets though we have a blooper reel that we put out every month of the podcast just like no way that's great stuff. and I you guys do that you guys should no that. we've that we've is. said in the past that all of our bloopers cannot make it on a blooper reel they're they're cut <laughs> out for, <laughs> and we can't we, Especially I've with wanted, Ryan's comedy. I know. I've, I've <laughs> tried to edit some things in the past. I'm like, none of this. It's going to be like 10 seconds, uh, the stuff we can use. So, no. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Ours average about like five minutes or so. We have like a lot in of- the real, But I usually include like material from about three or four episodes. And then this last month, I did one on one episode. And it was the episode <laughs> that they filmed right after Garrett and Megan got their cat bubbles. <laughs> Oh god, the cat! Oh, uh, the cat! <laughs> cat oh, oh my god! Steph, oh no! Be... <laughs> Garrett's just like Robbie's talking. And Garrett's just picking up the cat and moving it. <laughs> so it's like people. <laughs> oh, or you know, something will happen, and Robbie and I will mess up on something, and I. I, I usually will say, okay, put that, you know, I'll wave around. I'll say, put that, in the, that's it's got to go in the blooper reel. Blooper reel, blooper reel, please. You know, so I'll make a notation by just saying it during the recording. You're not very professional, it's the bottom line. No. It's pretty. <laughs> uh, they've been funny as hell, though. Because we, we do one once a month, and they're just, they're hilarious. They really are. They're great. How, how long are your recording it. sessions? Two, like, mm-hmm. two, two hours. hours. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Rarely less than two, and sometimes like last week it was like three. three. Well, you're talking. You guys are talking about our full content for oh, Patreon. Like you're not talking about the, what we put out for free, right? The free one's pretty quick. It's usually the raw footage is between like yeah, the raw footage hours. But the, right. the the non-Patreon one, what is it? How long is that one usually? Like an hour and twenty. Yeah. Okay. An hour and twenty. Average. But yeah. The raw footage is like three hours, four yeah. hours. It's a lot. Oh, yeah. How much content then does it end up being for, let's say, the highest Patreon member? What's what's mm. the full amount that you put out? Quite a bit. Well, our full podcast goes out to like everybody who's on Patreon. So it's usually about like an it's hour and fifty half. to two hours and ten. Usually mm-hmm. is kind of where it lands. Yeah. But if you're talking about the highest tier, right? Admirals, those guys are going to get the full well, um, programming. Plus they get bonus, yeah. the bonus video, uh, which is like a deep dive one that Robbie and I talk about some topic uh, once a month. And also we have the bonus um, guest interview. interview. So we have the guest interview, the deep dive interview uh, video, 
then the admirals get anywhere from two to what's the longest we've done on an admiral zoom call guys would you say three, three hours four hours three, three and a half four hours. hours okay a four hour zoom two to four hour zoom call every month so they're getting quite a bit of content to be honest mm-hmm. so, uh, yeah it's quite a bit yeah uh, I, do a, I do a cocktail video every month i make a cocktail <laughs> and then it's so funny you, you just said that because yeah. i was <laughs> Oh no, we only have a few days to get your cocktail video. I know, done. I, I gotta make a cocktail. <laughs> they, thought, they thought you were joking, I think. No, he does a cocktail video, and I oh, do. Wow. I forgot that I forgot Harry's there's more content. Quarters. I do a Harry's Quarters, which I answer questions, so um, random questions. So, you yeah, have a so lot of content, content, probably, there is. probably more than people can handle, honestly. We were, I think, initially, we were like, we, you know, we got to chart, we, we have to offer a lot of content so that there are real you know, tears, right? Tears so. and value for people that they're getting their value out of it. And I think yeah. people feel like, satisfied. Yeah. Well, a lot of Star Trek fans are completionists. So there there can't be too much content. They're going to just watch everything because they can't put it down until they've seen everything, I think. But Melissa, it mm-hmm. sound like you were going to say something or had a question. Yeah, I was going to say, does that, how does, uh, how do the uh, haikus and the limericks Factor in there. <laughs> yeah, that goes on the free one. The free one. Gets oh, that. gotcha. that's the highest tier, man. <laughs> we well, did, uh, in the beginning, just to talk about the haikus and limericks. In the very beginning, because we were evolving our format. Yeah. In the very beginning, we come back after watching it, and Garrett would say, "Okay, Robbie, you know, give a quick summary of this episode." And I would talk for like five or ten minutes. Like I couldn't give a quick summary. Because you start getting into it and you're telling this long story. So finally, we're like, we need something fast, like a haiku. Like, let's just limit ourselves to like force ourselves into a creative way of trying to capture a synopsis. And so, yeah, it started with a haiku and then we added the limerick because, you know, it's fun. Give us each a poem. Can we get an example? Yeah. Yes. Here, pull up your. You have a thing on your phone, right, Robbie? What's that? Do you want to pull up? Pull up a limerick that you. Uh, let's pull up our last limerick that we. Uh, no, no, because no, it hasn't aired yet. I'm gonna pull yeah, up dude. one. Let's pull up an old one. Here's an old one from Juggernaut. <laughs> the limerick. The limerick went something like this. There once was a Mayline. <laughs> This is what I do for this. this. <laughs> the blooper reel. All right, let's try it again. <laughs> there once was a Malon waste freighter with a real scary monster perpetrator. Janeway had a plan B. Seven had plans C and D. But Bellana ended up the Terminator. Ooh. Very nice. nice. I don't okay. know what it means. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> <laughs> Bolana save the day, I guess, but yeah. Yeah. All right. Here's my uh, haiku for Tinker, Tenor, Doctor, Spy. This Ooh, is the good one. Doctor. And it begins. Here we go. And if you remember, it's five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables is the haiku. Here we go for Tinker, Tenor, Doctor, Spy. Acceptable risk. Doc dreams himself the hero. Sits in the big chair. So there you go. Ooh. Excellent. Yeah. Nice, nice. That was a yeah. great doctor episode. <laughs> Good one. It sets the scene. <laughs> you know, uh, I did want to ask you, you are in season seven of Voyager. Uh, first of all, I feel like I'm kind of looking at Robbie when I ask this question, but <laughs> do you feel like you appreciate Voyager more and just can't wait to go back and watch it or are you just like after this i can't i can't watch voyager for another 10 years after this i've had so much voyager i need something else in my life or is it somewhere in, in between it's i would say a little of not both it's much more i have a new appreciation like 99 percent. i have a new appreciation in a way i I think when we made the show, I was really focused on directing for one thing. So I was just like, sure, I'll do this acting part if you let me direct. That's all I I was obsessed. Um, So I feel like I missed really being present as an actor and a human being in the way that um, 
the rewatch has allowed me to really be present and watch my fellow castmates, like the great work, so much great work that, that I had never seen or just didn't remember. And, and, uh, and all the associations as I have rewatched it, like, Oh yeah. I remember around the time of this episode, this is what was happening in my life or someone else's life. Or, there's all these associations it starts bringing up. That's been really cool. So I would say 99% uh all positive i think the one percent is because we've been banging through this like trying to deliver an episode every week i do feel like when we're done i can take a break for a while from voyager like <laughs> i'd like to move on to you know it's we, we've definitely trying to keep up with delivering the content every week it's been a lot of um yeah just a lot of watching and trying to keep up with the pace of it so hmm. Which the fans are shocked about, to be honest. Like a lot of them are like, I can't believe you guys are keeping up this pace because we, uh, yeah. we haven't we haven't missed uh, uploading an episode every Sunday night or early Monday, whatever, uh, since the beginning. So it's been it's been a gargantuan effort on all of our parts, uh, especially. Oh, one, of, one of the fun things that came out of this is the first Christmas that came around or the first holiday season that came around. We were like, well, do we put an episode like it's everybody other, you know, stores or whatever businesses shut down? Should we shut down? We're like, no, we can't shut down because we're people are subscribing and paying. Yeah. So we're like, what can we do different? So we came up with this idea of making up a fake Christmas episode and we, we would base it on suggestions from the fans. So every Christmas. That's dangerous. We have, yeah. We've done, <laughs> <laughs> you are well, they bold. <laughs> They would give us little, little, little lines, you know, maybe like, you know, like she's dead, he's dead, Jim, like little short little prompts to help us with the story, right? Yeah. Or situations, scene settings, whatever. So they give us like this improv. list. Yeah. yeah, it was like an improv thing. Improv so they give us the list, and we made up a Christmas themed or a holiday themed episode that we pretended was, you know, the unaired Christmas episode. It was. It's just a fun little thing but that's been a, a nice little tradition for us with the podcast is our yeah, first... lieutenant llama was born yeah somebody <laughs> suggested a lieutenant llama the no, first time milking a llama for yeah. egg milk yeah the llama, <laughs> they had to... the crew. Yeah, so. <laughs> the llama is now a holiday regular comes back every holiday though. But you thank wrote goodness the to lieutenant right yeah. past yeah yeah <laughs> You guys always have really cool merch. Uh, who helps you with that, or who does that? Like, uh, yeah. um, well, in the beginning, Becca designs a lot of it. Well, in the beginning, it started out like I, you know, I was like, okay, this is like this is kind of what I'm looking at, and then I would tell Rebecca, and then she'd be like, okay, and so she would kind of translate what I told her. Like, like for instance, for this design, I said I want to use the Coke swoosh, you know, with yeah. cursive. And then Rebecca would go through a billion fonts and she'd send, you know, she'd send me this, she'd send me that. So very collaborative in terms of um, yeah. kind of coming up with um, what I, what I envisioned. That was the beginning of our merch. And then so Rebecca's got on, design maybe, skills. Is that right? She, she makes can, a lot of like cartoons too. Yeah. Oh, she makes cool. the cartoon oh, stuff for so our episodes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. But, That's like our <laughs> trademark, really, those cartoons There's that one she one does. with, like, long hair from the 100th episode, and I was like, yeah. can you make this cartoon? So she made, like, She's this made. cartoon with flowing long hair. Yeah. It's so cute. Yeah. Yeah, if, like, if, like, Megan or I, like, grab onto something they're talking about, because I think in that episode, Garrett was talking about how he wanted his, the older version of Harry Kim to have long hair or something. Yeah. And so if we can grab onto something and I can make a cartoon of it just for like a little visual in the podcast, I will. But yeah, on the video, on the video version of the podcast, the cartoons will pop up in comedic mm -hmm. ways. And, you know, it's it's fun. It that's fun. that's graphic design, right? I mean, you went to school for graphic design. She didn't, no, didn't. She didn't no. go to school. No, she just wow, taught her to prodigy. It was a, I was yeah. a photographer for a few years. And so I kind of dabbled a lot in like, like Adobe Photoshop and all that stuff. And it wasn't that big of a leap to jump into like some graphic design stuff. Mm, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, she didn't go to school for it, but she definitely had the creative edge for sure. Yeah, it's um, cute because they're turned into stickers now too on yeah, the website. Yeah, so a lot of the 
cartoons that are on the episodes are stickers or you know, they're in our or, Discord. Or fans will request saying like, can you make yeah. me a cartoon? And Rebecca will make them into a cartoon and send them those stickers and stuff mm -hmm. or, or that image. Oh, wow. So, my yeah. favorite cartoon is the doctor riding his bicycle right. with a face mask on because one time... Robbie called Bob while they were doing the podcast and Bob was on his phone. We could take the rest of the story from there. Yeah, Bob, I, we had a question about, we were like, oh, I wonder if- Mike, can I start it and then you, fill, you finish it? The beginning was me and Robbie are talking about gifts that were given to us. We're, we're talking lunch. about Picardo, right? Bob Picardo? Yeah, yeah. No, well, well, so Robbie goes, do you okay. remember that, that expensive champagne that was given to us by production? And I said, what? We didn't get that. He goes, yeah, we did, I swear. I said, okay. Let me call, uh, uh, I said, let me call Beltran. I call him up. He doesn't answer. It goes to voicemail. I said, let me call Tim Russ. He didn't, he doesn't answer. Robbie goes, let me call Picardo. So we call <laughs> Go ahead, Robbie. Go ahead. So it, yeah, it was a bottle of wine, not champagne, by the way. Bottle of wine, and, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, bottle of wine. And I remember they made a special label for our show, like season five or whatever. It was a, it was a holiday gift or a wrap yeah. gift. And uh, I remember it. Uh, yeah, he he didn't remember. He called a couple of people in the middle of the podcast, like we're literally recording and we're like calling on our phone, and he doesn't get them. And so I I'm like, let me try Bob Picardo. So I call Bob. Bob always picks up. Bob always picks up. So he picks <laughs> up. And I'm like, Bob. He he goes, Hey, how are you? And I said, Hey, we're recording the podcast right now. Do you and, have a minute? Do you have a minute? And he goes. He goes, yeah, sure. He said, I'm I'm on my bike. He, I guess he had his headphones in or something. He goes, yeah. I'm riding my bike, but, you know, it's not hardcore. I'm just riding down the bike path right now. Sure. So you could hear the wind. You could hear him kind of huffing. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so funny. I was like, he was mountain biking, actually. Sorry. He was what? He was mountain biking. That's what he was, he was doing. Mount oh. Yeah. Yeah. He was, yeah, you could hear him kind of huffing, but he's like, sure, I'll answer the question. I'm like, you sure you don't want to call me? I'll call you back. And he's like, no, 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 I'll talk to you. So I ask him the question, and just as he starts to answer, all of a sudden we hear this. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, Bob, are you are you there? Are you okay? It's totally quiet. And I and I go, Robbie, you just killed Bob Picardo. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. He's a hologram. It's uh, He'll be yeah, fine. Yeah. Just reboot him. <laughs> And and it was a nervous moment though, Robbie. If you recall, yeah, it, was it was it was seconds. I mean, it was lo it, it seemed like minutes. And then finally, we hear, "Oh, uh, excuse me, I seem to have uh, fallen on some leaves," is what he said, something like that. <laughs> so, he, <laughs> so he totally ate it, and um, yeah, he ate yeah. it. Wow. his upper butt cheek. He did yeah. say, I, just, I, "I think I injured my upper butt cheek." Yeah, but oh, wow, he, he did answer the question, and he stayed in it, and. Uh, yeah, so, absolutely. by the way, do you have that bottle of? Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did we get an answer to the question, though? Yeah. Was there a bottle or not? Does there was. Yeah. There was, right? There was okay. a bottle of wine. Yeah. He agreed. He concurred after he um, got up yeah. off of falling down that, yes, there was a bottle of wine. Um, I can't remember the answer because I was so terrified that he had almost died i was yeah, like I no we, we thought he was dead. dead we thought he was dead <laughs> we, we really did um but your question to robbie earlier ryan about whether or not he wants to rewatch yeah once a burn or not and for me to answer that question i could jump right back in starting up season one episode one start over second time round would be the name of it for me so i'm i, I can <laughs> Yeah, what would that be called in like Star Trek terms? Like going, you know, the second pass or something like that. There's something there. Second full rewatch? I don't know. I don't know what you mm. call it. Timeline. Mm. Second time. Another timeline. <laughs> a uh, a the time loop. With doubles. Look at that. Time, time loop. loop. Time loop. Yeah. Yeah. The double with triples. The triple with doubles. <laughs> the double with triples. <laughs> the double with triples. <laughs> look, at, look at this. Look this at this guy awesome. dropping DS9 knowledge and TOS. <laughs> I know. Like a marketing section, I know. <laughs> so here, here's the big question. Have you decided what you are doing when season seven of Star Trek Voyager is over? That is I a big like, question. Can I just say one thing, Robbie? I feel like the best way is just to review every day of Ryan Husk's life. Since he <laughs> We're just going to recap Ryan Husk and his life. from infancy. You can just do one day and repeat it over and over again. <laughs> I'm usually just sitting. This is 
pretty much chronicle my own life just like this. <laughs> Robbie, go ahead. I'll let Robbie take. I mean, I, we don't have a anything that we can commit to right now, but we mm-hmm. definitely have uh, created a community of people with the Delta Flyers family, like our our Patreon patrons, just everybody. Not even not not even just limited to the people who pay or support the show, but the, the feedback all all over the place has been phenomenal. So I'd love to keep that Delta Flyers family going, and we have some ideas you know of ways to um to have some content that'll be interesting for people mm-hmm. and not the same stuff without going back into a time loop and just doing the same thing mm-hmm. we've got some ideas but um we finish up in august we're actually um for the admiral level patrons that have been a part of this for basically the whole ride we're throwing a big party in Las Vegas. We're going to do our final. Nice. Uh, yeah, we're going to do our final recording of a of a podcast live in front of that group at this great event space that we found in Vegas. It'll be around the uh, the creations convention, so that people can, you know, um, go to both. Yeah, yeah. do go to both, and I think probably uh, around that time is when we'll. we'll we'll announce kind of what we're committed to doing, but we'll do something. So, yeah. So you're going to make yeah. them wait until that last day and build, build the anticipation. It might, it might take that long for us to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I definitely, I definitely think that fandom and you guys know this with the seventh rule and, and with the virtual Trek, like all this stuff, I think the pandemic has opened a lot of people's eyes mm-hmm. to way connecting and mm-hmm. to staying kind of engaged with fandom in a way that we didn't before the pandemic. And so, yeah, if, if it's uh, the Delta Flyers doing more podcasts or maybe even some new ideas beyond just a podcast that we've talked about, I want to do Star Trek camp. I want to like, you know how people go on the cruise and they do all these activities? I want like summer camp for wow. kid, like like a kids camp. I want to do for that adults. For, for adults. Yeah, for adults, where we get we go we go on away missions. Like we have different people there, and it could be a cool thing. So we're talking about all kinds of crazy ideas of ways to to kind of evolve the podcast family, and we'll see. We'll see. I it's think great Robbie idea. and I should. I think Robbie and I should start basically doing a podcast documenting our fitness journey. Where we both get into supreme shape and become middle-aged Chippendales dancers. And we're going to just I haven't start. heard this idea before yet. <laughs> oh, oh, I forgot to tell you about it. Okay. Uh, do you guys ever, uh, do you guys have any of the fan mail that you received back in the day? Do you still have any of that fan mail? Oh, I don't you mean have from it. on the set when we were filming? When, yeah, yeah. 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 Because when you're yeah. filming, they, occasionally would hand you a box of all yeah. the fan mail that got yeah. mailed to Paramount. And I still have some of those. And actually every once in a while I'll read one or two and especially some from the, the kids that, that say the, just the cutest things, you know, do you, yeah. you ever get a chance to, to look at those, uh, look at the fan mail? No, I just went, I have, I don't have my fan mail anymore. Um, oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I gave it to, I had a lady that was answering or going through it for me, Deborah um, Stillwell. Do you remember Eric Stillwell and yeah. Deborah Stillwell? Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. We just saw them recently. So. Yeah, Deborah Stillwell did my fan mail and kind of organized it. And I had pre-printed cards that, you know, had a little photo that she would send back and stuff. So I didn't, I don't know that I had possession of that fan mail really um, for, for much of the time I don't, it'd always go to her, but I wish I did have some of that. That would be cool to go back and look at. Yeah. Eric Stilwell is credited with writing a Voyager episode. I can't remember which one it is. And he also is credited with writing, uh, yesterday's enterprise of next generation, which is one of the best next, next generation episodes, I think, but I could look really? it up. I don't remember which Voyager one. he <laughs> yeah. Wasn't Eric. I think Eric Stilwell was Michael Pillar's assistant or yes. came- through Michael Pillar's office. Yes, that sounds right. Yes, yeah. it was like a Dave first. Se- it was a first season boy drop, so like seven or eight, something like that. Wow. Oh, uh, 
uh, look up Prime Factors. See if that's the one. Prime Factors. Yeah, I'm checking right now. Hmm. I didn't mean to slow everybody down while I'm looking, <laughs> while I'm looking <laughs> this up here. Uh, let's see. It was, yeah, it was Prime Factors. You got it. Episode nine. Nice. Oh, good knowledge. Ooh. Good knowledge. Mm -hmm. Garrett. Wow. Up the top. <laughs> Sirak, did you find when you went back and rewatched DS9 episodes, did you get something you didn't expect out of that journey? Um, yeah, I mean, I really I got a lot of appreciation for the the people that I worked alongside with. You know, most yeah. of the time I was just there to do my thing, and as long as I did my thing and I, you know, got that done, I really wasn't paying attention to what everybody else was doing. Yeah. And on the, on the rewatch, I get to see what everybody else was doing. And um, I was pleasantly surprised by Nana Visitor and how amazing I think she was as an, or is as an actor and how she played the role of yeah. Kira. I really liked that. Um, I was also more aware of how much of an ensemble it was. So it wasn't really captain heavy. I don't know. You know, I'm just now learning other shows, but it wasn't that captain heavy. It was a lot of ensemble. So we had, mm -hmm. we had a really good cast of characters that everybody had their own stories, their own character development. And, um, I'm also really surprised by how early that the characters were set into how they eventually became known. Like Quark was pretty much Quark, like from the beginning. Yeah, uh, I didn't see much. You know, he didn't change much. He he did go through things, but the way he his understanding of the character was pretty spot on. And mm -hmm. same with Odo and all the uh, other characters. So, so yeah, my biggest takeaway is how great the other actors were. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and you know how much I feel privilege to have been working alongside of them and kind of piggybacking off of their success to boost my own. So I appreciate mm -hmm. all of that too. Yeah. You had, you had an awesome cast, really talented people and, and good human beings. I I've gotten to know them more since the shows, you know, wrapped up than I did when we were making those shows. I, I didn't feel like there was a lot of, mixing because we were all so busy like you show up at paramount and you're we got seven days to make these episodes like go 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 you know yeah but i saw garrett more than i saw anybody else from the show garrett used really? to hang out used to hang out yeah and i like yeah. that about it because he was like you know he wasn't caught up in his own bubble he was actually trying to reach out and talk to other oh. people so i like that about garrett um but I didn't get to see you that much while you guys yeah. were working. I, I don't think I ever really saw you while we were working. I don't think so. I mean, I don't remember going over, even though it was right across the street from yeah. us. I remember going to your set ever that I can remember. Um, yeah. And I think because I had young kids when we were making that show. I mean, Garrett, yeah. and I've talked about this on the podcast, like, I would go to work and then I would bail out of there as soon as we were wrapped. Cause you know, I got a couple of two, three young kids at home and just wanting to take those hours to get home. So I didn't hang out a lot. I, I think Garrett and I have talked about it. We went out for drinks or something once in seven years. I wow. asked him every day, please let's go get a beer after work. He's like, yeah, you know, I'm sorry. Got the kids, the family. I, I got to go. I'm sorry. And then four years later, we got to go for the first time to have a drink. And the only uh, time, I think. And that was, and I was like, why today? Why, Robbie? And he said, <laughs> Carol and the kids are out of town. I, I go, knew yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it tomorrow, too, then. Yeah. yeah. I, you know what I should have said, Robbie? I said, can I pay to make sure that they're out of town more often? Can I just, can I just write a check and send them out of town? Because that's the only way I could have seen you. And it was one of years. It was crazy. Yeah. So I who are you so hanging happy. out with, Garrett? I mean, because I know you wanted to hang out. I mean, did you find somebody to hang out with? Oh, Beltran. Beltran a lot. Yeah. yeah. Beltran was the only guy that wasn't married on the show, pretty much. Yeah. Besides myself. So he was 
footloose and fancy free. And he was, yeah, 15 years older than me. So arguably another generation. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, we, we were the two people that were but best buds. It was, you know, us laughing. But I, one of my most memorable times not hanging out with Voyager people was with you and with um, uh, Donald Faison from um, Clueless. It yeah. was the three, yeah. the three of us were sitting there. Yeah. And was it you that drove your car up? Did you drive your car up, or who yeah, was that? I, used to, I would drive my car right up. Okay, right so up to the you trailer. drove. So, Sirac so drives his car up, and Donald and I are sitting there. Sirac gets out, and Donald pretends like he's carjacking the car. <laughs> from, <laughs> so, so he grabs Sirac and pretends to beat him down and stuff like that. And like, and while he's doing this, there's a Paramount tour that's driving by. <laughs> 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 like what the hell's going on and they're all watching uh, and the tour guys well now we have the sets of a voyager deep space nine and clueless and um well oh, i don't not sure what's going on here and let's go over here yeah, it was just like the funniest thing that this whole like made up little um drama was happening but that was so funny though i love that funny. Yeah. Shout out to Donald Faison. He ended that was up Ciroc and Donald doing their Christmas special on yeah. on the <laughs> on the stages. He was doing what Clueless at the time, and uh, I used to hang out at their set a lot. Um, Avery knows Donald's family and his his parents. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, he ended up. So flash forward after Deep Space Nine was over. Uh, and I was auditioning for different roles. I I tested. I auditioned for the show Scrubs, oh. and uh, so I got to the test. I got to testing. Right, it's me and Donald in the final mm. audition room. Right, and I'm and I'm like, I'm, I love Donald, so I'm like, dude, it's either me or you. We're gonna get the show. And Bill Lawrence, who was the executive producer of Scrubs, had just come off of Spin City, which was like a hit. Yeah, and I already knew that it was. I knew Scrubs was going to be a hit too, because you could tell by the pilot, the way it was written, it was hilarious. Yeah. Um, I didn't know Zach Braff at the time, but um, so yeah, me and Donald Faison in the finals, right? We're sitting there. I think we're at the Disney lot. A um, bunch of executives in the room. Everybody's there. You know, when you're testing, they make you sign the contract. So you're like signing a five year, six year co guarantee contract. You're like, oh shit, it's, it's going down, you know? Yeah. But uh, I remember I was like, dude, it's either me or you going to get this job. And they picked the right guy because I, I wasn't I'm not the comedy guy. And I'm was just coming off a of drama and he was coming off of the comedy background. So and he did very well on that show. And I'm, I'm happy for him. Man. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy for him. Uh, Funny for though, record, you, I think you, knew each, like you guys knew each other. You'd hung out like. Yeah. It, yeah. Small world. And so yeah. funny you up there at that moment. Yeah. I mean, you never know that that's how it's going to go down. Um, but we both knew that whoever got this job was going to be like, you know, it was going to be another kind of career changing, life changing thing as an actor. Um, and that show Scrubs ended up going on for like 10 years, I think, or something ridiculous. And now they're doing uh, T-Mobile commercials or whatever together. because That's right. Yeah. 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 So but I will say for the record, thank you for sharing that story. I didn't even know that you were down to that last one, but um, I definitely think you could have handled that very well too. Just so you know. Yeah, Sorok's funny as shit, off. and everybody knows he it. Is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you could have, you could have not, look, it was down to the two of you. Clearly, it was mm -hmm. I, you know the flip of yeah. a coin at that point. So that's all. I could have pulled. I could have pulled it off. But once again, you know, when you're friends with somebody, like the way you two guys are friends. You yeah. root for each other. So it's yeah. like, um, if you succeed, it's, you know, I'm succeeding vicariously through you and, and vice versa. So I, I just look like there's enough of the pie for everyone to have a, a slice. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I have to hoard anything. There's plenty of out here for, for us. And um, I'm satisfied with the, you know, life decisions and the way my life turned out after that. So, yeah. um but yeah, that's 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 part of the game, you know. That's part of the business. Is you go up, you compete against each other for these roles. But it's really, you know, the best man wins most of the time. I remember, you know, losing a few roles here and there. But after a while, you look back and you're like, well, I think they got it right. You know, like I did mm. pretty good. Mm. <laughs> did uh, did he did he read for Jake Sisko? 
no, he didn't read for Jake Cisco. Um, okay. He wasn't even out here at the time. He was still in New York at that time. Uh, Do you know anybody um, that did Ciroc? Like that you yeah. found out later that did? I I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, there was a bunch of us that were always um, in the same. You know, when you go out on auditions, you kind of see the same guys that are always in your yeah the same cast of characters. Yeah. yeah, you know, you know who they are. Yeah. You're like, oh, it's that guy again. Okay, you know, and and so, um, yeah. As a young black actor going out for auditions, there were only a handful of us, the Nick Cannons and the those of us that were going out for the same roles. Um, but one of them was uh, this kid named Chaz. He he's he was on the Cosby Show. He also played, I think, Michael Jackson. At, in one of the Michael Jackson videos, he played young mm. Michael Jackson in the Beat It video or something. But um, wow. he went out for the audition. I remember him. I don't want to blow his spot up, but yeah. yeah. Well, uh, we only got a minute left. We're going to have to run in uh, just a second here. But Garrett, Robbie, uh, Nala, yeah. hey, Nala, uh, Megan. <laughs> Rebecca, this has been so much fun. We really, really appreciate you taking the time and talking about Voyager for an additional hour on <laughs> on top of how much you talk about Voyager every week. Uh, we really appreciate it. It's been so much fun. It's been a laugh a minute. Um, any uh, final thoughts you guys would like to uh, throw out there about Voyager or this three and a half year voyage you've taken uh, with the Delta Flyers? I guess I would just say, like, uh, to reiterate maybe what I said before is, like, the biggest surprise and the biggest gift to me of doing this podcast is the the feeling I get with the fans and getting to know them and, and the kind of sense of the family and community that mm-hmm. it's created, especially during the pandemic, where I think a lot of people were feeling uh, disconnected and isolated in a way. and this uh our podcast has really been able to create a sense of connection in a way i didn't expect you know it's not just garrett and i doing our thing it's a dialogue it's a it's an energy we get from them and it's been a real gift so hope it keeps going yeah yeah i mean all all the people that we've heard from all the fans that have written emails to us it's just it's been tremendous and um I guess more than anything is knowing that, you know, something that we have created, content that we have created has, has been able to touch people and has been able to change their lives or at least give them a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, it's pretty amazing. So that's probably mm-hmm. that's the most rewarding thing for sure about this podcast, about this project that we've been doing for three years now. Yeah. Is that right? Is it three of, years? Yeah. 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 A lot of appreciation. Yeah. A lot of gratitude too for uh, everyone who's helped out you know and everyone who listens and tuned in tunes in continues to tune in really just a lot of gratitude across the board star trek has the best fan base and i've Mm -hmm. just come to realize that more and more as time goes on it just reaffirms itself and the the amount of support out there that the people give you man in the love that is real and and you know authentic is is so uplifting and it's a community and that's really what you're talking about is this community of us kind of working together and sharing our pa- passions sharing our pain talking going through life together um that's really what the emphasis covid has brought so much more of an emphasis on how much meaning that is in our lives and um so yeah i'm i'm grateful too for the the fan base and and for the people that show so much love and support out there from my man Aaron Eisenberg, you know, who yeah, who really pushed <laughs> pushed his vision, you know, and and helped me get to uh, this level of understanding. But yeah. um, but yeah, this is it's the love, man. It's the community of love, and you know, whatever we can do in a small part to contribute to it and keep it going and keep it alive. I think that's you know that's a great space to live in. Well said. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks very much. I uh, really appreciate it. It's been a ton of fun. Uh, we can't wait to uh, find out what you're going to be doing next. Uh, we can't wait to hear all the fun stories about the shenanigans in August. <laughs> it's going to be a great time. Uh, but uh, Garrett, Megan, 
uh, Robbie and Rebecca and Nala and Walter. Thank you all very much for joining us. Uh, everybody at home, thank you for joining us. Go check out the deltaflyers.org. The org is the important part. I don't know what .com is, but it's not them. So go check that out. Uh, and we'll see you next time. Hey, what what's what do we sign off on with uh, Virtual TrekCon? Enjoy Virtual TrekCon. I don't know. Beedy, beep, 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 be